Welcome back, everyone. I have a project today, which is, as you can imagine from the title, PCB engraving. Uh, what the deal is, is one, I have a bunch of copper cladding laying around from the days when I used to etch stuff. It's just sort of accumulated and I'm really not doing anything with it. Two, I had this project that I wanted to do for an event coming up where I could make a purpose-built protoboard that would fit just perfect for these little Pro Minis, Pro Micros that I have laying around that we're doing some projects with. And so then, as you can see in here, they're all in these little twosie uh, little pads here so you can solder this or something like this to here and then you could fly wire out of it, right? So there's that. The uh, the next thing though is I did not have enough time to get this stuff done and you know in the EDA program and ship it out to the board house and get it back in time, right? So it almost kiboshed it right there and it's not that big of a deal to have it. I could have used one of the proto boards I have laying around but I thought man it would be really cool to show people hey look we did it ourselves and it's purpose built for these you know as you know the other ones aren't. The, the proto boards that are kind of breadboard style you can get them from Adafruit and others, right? So anyways, I thought I would just go ahead and engrave this, right? And so typical ways to do this, you know, you could get yourself a PCB engraver. I have CNC machines, so, you know, same diff, but, you know, much bigger. And um, some kind of either EDA tool that will export to G-Code or export as a DXF file that you can import into your uh, CAM software, right? Well, what I decided to do here instead is just take this directly into Fusion. Take it, make it in Fusion. So in Fusion, I made each one, of, well, I made one of these little pads here and I extruded it up with the holes in it. Then I could pattern it with a horizontal patterning. That got that job done in like two seconds, what would have took me a whole lot of poking and placing in, in my in KiCad, right? And then added the bus bar system here. From there, then it was just uh, developing the, uh, you know, 2D contour and send it off to the mill. So pretty cool way to do this. The other thing that you'll see in here is I also, uh, because I don't have enough space here to grip, and I didn't want to just tape on here, because you'll see that some people that just tape this down and that's super duper good, that's fine for a one-up. If you're going to do multiples of these, then you need to have some kind of fixture that you can set this into. A typical thing to do would be maybe to just put, you know, tape something else here and you'll have this here and this here in the corner. You can just sort of lock it in place. What I did, because it's easy, you know, if you've already got a mill sitting there for this, is there you'll see a hole. So I just made about, you know, it's about this thickness. Um, of a depression in the sacrificial piece of MDF that you'll I'll just set this into set it into in a couple screw you know, uh, clamps I put on the side here hold it in place hit go then when one's done I can pop it out put another one in hit go again pop it in and then I can get all the things I need done right the other part of this is I only needed I don't know six to ten of these you know I didn't need hundreds if I needed hundreds that's that's verging on insanity so Anyways, that's the task at hand. That's what I want to show you how I what I did here, and then later there'll probably be a second video showing me uh, putting this together. Okay, let's get started. All right, so here is my part. This is, uh, you know, you can kind of see what's going on here. This is the uh, the quick, fast. I don't know how to use an EDA tool or I just don't want to go through the effort kind of a thing, right? So that's kind of what this was. This is supposed to be a practice solder board, like your typical proto board of sorts for, for solder practice, right? And I wanted to just get it done. I was starting to go through KiCad to build the damn thing, but then I was like, I haven't made a footprint and then I had to put it all out there and make, and then, you know, do the, the, the PCB. And then after that, export out, get it as a DXF, bring it in like that, right? And so I thought, well, what the hell? I'll just go in here. It's not like I'm actually doing connecting any traces together. Let's just make all these little little pads here and then pattern the whole thing. So this is what I got. This is what I'm showing just to say that, yes, you can do this. You got a little mill. You got an engraver bit, you know, you know, um, and a drill. Go for it, right? So what we have, this is I created one of these here. And you see? So I just got a pattern here. What I want to do, what I want to do now though, is I want to create a bus bar system that goes across here. I don't need to get that out of the way for a second. I don't need to have it symmetrical. I don't feel like that's important or anything like that. So what I'm going to do is just get rid of one of these rows, rebuild it to where I have a long connected row instead. Okay. 
Um, there's a handful of different ways to do this. Um, I'm, I'm diverting from all of my best practices, uh, design theory type stuff, and just going with the get this shit done, get it to the mill, get the thing carving out, and be done with it, right? I do plan on later running this through, you know, KiCad and getting a nice little proto board. And then the thought would be, let's go ahead and ship these out and have them made for classes or for whoever wants them or whatever, right? But um, for now, I just want to do this. And it's good for a video. All right, so what I'm going to do, because it's a pattern, I'm just going to find the pattern down here. I'm going to edit it, and I just change it from 6 to 5. So that's cake. Uh, right there so that that shows up like that now I can go in here and I can start making a new one but the you know kind of OCD in me is I don't want to get into here and start making another one of these that I've already made when it's it's already done and all I have to do is make another pattern and as you can kind of see when I hover over this it shows yeah you know some a couple different things are popping out here originally if I roll this back it was here and then I just pattern that, right? Now, this is, you know, uh, retrospect, you know, looking back all the time when you make something, yeah, you probably didn't make it the bestest, most efficient way to begin with, right? So I could have just made a sketch like this and then put the little connector between. But what, my, what I started with first was the information on a standard issue pad. So I have the whole size. I think it was, um, I think I went with uh, 0.4 millimeters, something like that. Anyway, so that's the hole right there, and then the pad size right here made it elliptical um, because sure, why not? Also, it, it gives you more to solder on and keeps since we're going to have a 0.1 inch pitch, you know, it keeps it from touching there. So, anyway, so that was the idea, and then I moved forward and connected the the trace across like that, and then I patterned that right. Well. Again, like I said, maybe not the best way to do it, but it's good that I did because now I can go back in time and I can grab this pattern and I can go to create a uh, blah, 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 pattern rectangle here and I can come in here and pick my faces. Not sure if I need to, if I could have got away with uh, not selecting all of them, but what the hell. So I do this and then I'm going to make a quantity of two with the direction of this. And if I drag this out here about like so, Oh. Two. Okay, so if I bring this back just a touch, two inches is probably just about spot on. So we have that there like so, and that's really great. If I come forward in time here like this, then wait for it to choke for a little bit, and then, then I have this. I can take this now, and my thought was to pattern this across this way and then connect all the dots together for my... Uh, bus bar system, right? But if I just drag a line across all these, you know, a square across all of them, um, I'm going to fill in the holes. I don't want to go across the top of the pads or underneath of them because I think that that would look stupid. So what I would like to do is get this kind of done first. Here's here's my thought. Um, in the course of making things, typically I will sit here for a little bit, put my head on the table, and I will think and think and think and go, am I making this the most optimum uh, the most, not the efficient, not the fastest, the me in the future or the team that I'm working with, are they going to be okay editing this? Are they going to look at this and go, wow, this is stupid, dude. Why'd you do it this way, right? That's That that happens all the, all the time. That's a pretty normal occurrence. That's what you should be doing with this, right? But for right now, I don't care. So I'm just going to slam through this. I think I have a pretty good idea. All right, I got a new thing here. So I, I got this created here. I got the little, uh, just added a little sketch between there. I'm going to go back here and make this be 2 instead of 34. All right, so I just have these two. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and, and space these out. I'm going to pattern these, but overlap them a little bit. And then just maybe I'll luck out in the middle there. I'll be able to just get rid of the middle one or I'll chop it away. So... I think that's the quickest way to do this. Oh, no, that's, 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 that's not right. Yeah, spacing's point one. Hmm. So I think this might be okay. If I get rid of one here, what's it look like? Hey, that'll work out great. So now did I do the right? I should have 17. 1, 2, 3, 4, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 17, and then I should probably have 17 over on the other side. Uh, I think that's job done. This other piece here I just unhid, so this is just a separate body that I made. This is, you can see from the, the little ears here, what, what's going on is I made it with the ears to begin with here, even though the, the panel, the copper clad is a square. So what I did is I did this, I put that on top of that, and then I took this and... Oh, well, okay, so there's, I just made a big square, padded, okay, there you go, and then I just projected that down on top of it, so I reused the same sketch on top of there and pocketed it in, so then, <clears throat> so then what this ends up being is a fixture to hold this, because, uh, you know, I, I wasn't, you don't have enough room on here to clamp it, right, so you're going to take the, the square, Sorry, I'm going to take a piece of MDF, put it onto the mill. This has already been done. And we're going, to, uh, we're going to mill this out. And then you can take the copper cladding. You could stick it in here. The corners will fit, right? So if it's not obvious, those of you that don't do machining, if you try to make a square, the, 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 the end mill is going to come around here. It's going to round that corner out. So you have to, uh, to make these little ears on here or something like it. And then you can um, fit the corner in there, all right? So anyways, that's what we have. Now, my hope was we could just sit it down here and maybe it would be tight enough that it would sort of stay in place, uh, which I can tell you from the one we did already, it's basically true. Um, but it did kind of want to pop out, so we ended up right on the side here just screwing in a, a, a screw with a washer on it to hold it in place. Another option is and I didn't want to do this, is you could spray glue it down. You could hit a little spray glue and then just pick it back up, but I didn't want to have to wash off the, the thingies, right? All right, so we're in the cam side here now, and I have to update all these. So I have all these different drill paths. I could have done this as a pattern. Uh, it was a pain in the ass to pick all of these circles. I guess I think I just didn't want to have to calculate the distance between them. It doesn't seem, looking back at it now, that it would have been that hard. So, anyways, I need to... nothing. Those are all... look at that. So those are the same hole pattern. So everything still matches. Those holes are fine. The only thing I have to edit then... Oh, this is this is cake then. The only thing I have to do is... You see the tool pass that I had previously? Now I just have to update that. Yep, get rid of those and pick. Look at this. Boop. Boop. All right, so right here I'm just indexing. Um, this is a knee mill, so I have a handle down here. I can manually adjust it. It's kind of better, I feel, than the, the small little increments. This is the centroid uh, controller, so I'm just zeroing the Z out right there. Um, and then cutting the pad. So incidentally, the, the one you saw just a second ago, that was a clip from where I'd done the holes first and then I did the outline. So this is obviously a brand new board. To save some time, it's not necessary that you do the holes first, then you do the outline or vice versa. So what had happened before is I had the drill in there from a previous operation, so then just drilled the holes and then did the profile cut. Then the next board that I put in, I do the profile cut first because the engraver is in there, and then I change to the drill, which you'll see in a second here, and do that operation. All right, so uh, like I said, now we're just um, I'm swapping out the engraving bit for just a small little uh drill these are this nothing special about this is it comes in the sets that we normally use for the dremel tool so far it's been working pretty good i was worried it's, it's so small we're going to snap it but it, it worked out fine now you can see the board flex a little bit i you know i'm not super worried about that there was no kind of it, 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 it the hole was fine right it wasn't off at all right So when this gets done here, you can see the screws and washers. That's it works fine for this, but if I had to do a lot of these, I'd come up for sure. I'd come up with a better system than that, and I'd probably do more than one at a time. 
So I'm starting with a 120 grit right here, and you notice I'm being really light with it to begin with. I'm trying to knock over all these little spikes that are everywhere on it, uh, which, you know, incidentally, be careful because they're kind of like a little copper cactus. It'll get all stuck in you if you even touch the thing. So then this is a 1500, and I'm kind of using alcohol to do a wet sand and then get some kind of little acid brush or something. Make sure you get all of the conductive particles out of the traces because that could be bad. Uh, one thing that might help is if you got some shop air or something, blow it after it's done to make sure there's nothing left inside there. So there's the deal. There's uh, PCB engraving if that's something that you guys want to give a try. Things I want to point out um, as you're doing this, you know, it's it's pretty can be pretty easy to bridge some of this stuff. It, you do have a, a pretty healthy gap here because of the engraving right in here. But still watch out for, you know, any kind of, uh, you know, kind of bridging you might get. Um, a thing that you can, you kind of could use that to your benefit. You can solder on the face of this just as well as you can on any pad. So this could become your whole ground plane if you wanted it to be. And so then you could just solder anywhere you wanted to, maybe, right? But as a note, I would say that as you do any, you know, amount of soldering here before you get three miles down the road, Check every so often all your pins to make sure that they don't have or do have the connectivity that you need them to have. Make sure you don't have any small little whisker bridges there or whatever, okay? Lastly, uh, this is just raw copper, so it's exposed to the elements. So when you're finished with this, I would uh, recommend if it's something that you want to keep for any amount of time, do some type of conformal coating. Even if you have to just spray something on there, you know, you know, maybe, you know, whatever, you know. Um, but I get... I think I just bought about a quart of uh, spread on, not spray on, conformal coating, and I think it was maybe 25 bucks or something like that, right? So that'll be, I'll link that up here somewhere. So anyways, that's it. Um, kind of interesting, like I said, not a new thing by, by any means, but you know, just something uh, interesting that I needed to do. So thanks everyone for watching.